confirming that as chair of the Rochester Select Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum six to executive mm -hmm. order 01-20 and mm -hmm. act 92, this yes. public body is authorized to meet mm -hmm. electronically. In accordance with Act 92, there's no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are providing public access to the meeting using the Zoom platform. And you can access this platform either by going to the posted warnings around town, going to the town website, or requesting a link from the town clerk. Um, and there's still everyone I see is pretty visible. Sometimes when it only shows up as a phone number, we ask someone to identify themselves. So we have record of who is all in the meeting, but I think that is all pretty obvious here. And before we start, does anyone have any additions to the agenda tonight? Going once, going twice. All right, everybody's Thanks. hungry. <laughs> nope. not, I'm not That's adding okay. anything to it. I will make a statement. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, so first we have the meetings from, or the minutes from the January 11th select board meeting. And I read those and they looked, let me add, let Jeffrey in here. Um, I've got a little something to say about those minutes. You know. yep. yep. I just want to, I want to make it clear that it's not the select board's responsibility to seek a, uh, the, out the Rochester Planning and Zoning Board for the school subdivision. That's the school board's job. And down in the minutes for our executive session, it just says select board recommend meeting with Rochester Planning and Zoning. We recommend that the school board meets with them, not, not us. So I just want to make that clear in, in our minutes. And there's several places in there where it kind of states that maybe we're responsible for that. And I want to make sure that that's not the case. All right, so you're going to move to um, accept the minutes with those corrections? I, I just want to put a line in there to say that the Rochester Select Board is not responsible for the subdivision of the school. That's what I'd like to do right. because there's several okay. indicate there's, it would be too hard to go back through the minutes to pick out everywhere where that might show up. So I really think that we just need a line in there that clarifies it for us. All right. As an amendment to the, to the minutes. And there's just a couple small typos where it says Dune called the at 602. It should be the meeting at 602 and under Jones updates, uh, the third sent, the third line down says speaking with VTrans, the work they will provide. Just a couple typos. All right. Now, now is it accurate that what we say about the town budget there too? I thought I thought our budget has all the appropriations in it. The the um that's. It's not the, the the number for the budget is is set and then the appropriation. So the total is if with all the appropriations passed. Is that Nancy? Do you want to speak to that? What we have listed on the warning is only the budgeted item. The appropriations, including the library, Gorva, and um, what's the third one? um recycling recycling will be in addition to that million dollar figure okay i was under the impression with my conversation with greg the other day that everything was in there it's even the all board. the articles no so nancy the appropriations that are not included are the library the recycling and what was the other one we will, the we ambulance. Are voting, we are voting separately on the library request, the Werva request, and the recycling request. There are three items. 
Plus, we will also be voting on all of those social service um, appropriation requests and okay. also reserve funds. So several social service appropriation requests and reserve funds. Thank you. It hasn't changed from any other year. Okay, well, that's what I thought, but I just wanted to make sure I had it correct. Thank you. Okay. All right, so I move to approve those minutes with the stated corrections, the typo corrections and adding the sentence that it's not the select board's responsibility to approach the planning board about the subdivision. I second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. All right. And then we have the minutes for the special select board meeting on January 21st, which addressed a um, couple issues. One about the um, change in the sidewalk maintenance contract, and then and a letter of support for the Big Town Projects application for the Better Places grant. I saw there were some corrections in the recording of that um, in the middle. Um, so the improvements for the streetscape and helping to find the sidewalk between the gallery building and heading down Peavine Drive. It's heading down Route 100 towards Peavine Drive, not on Peavine Drive. Um, that's one um, change that should be there. Um, there's also another that said south. Isn't it heading north? Um, it depend on the direction you're headed. Depends which no, way which you're, way you're going. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think that was pretty clear if you're headed from the gallery. You're heading north if you're from at the gallery. It says uh, if um, you start from the bike and head south towards the old Simpson building. So that should be north. Up oh, north. Okay. Right. And that's what I wrote down in the article that'll go in this week, <laughs> going north. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's what threw me that north. Yep. Okay. Um, so any other corrections on those minutes? Then I'd move to approve those as, um, as corrected. I second that. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All righty. Um, got the minutes. We don't have any guests. I guess we're all guests. So, Joan, um, what have you got for updates for us tonight? There we go. Uh, not much, really. I'm spending a lot of time doing FEMA paperwork. Same, same. Same, same. Yeah. Fema. That's 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 my that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> yeah. And how have you did you uh talk to the state at all about the paving when we walked through the village there, Joan, at all? Yeah, I sent uh last week, was it yeah, last week uh a full report to Chris Bump, who I assume was gonna distribute it to all those different people on his previous email in VTrans. I haven't heard back from him. I guess the, I think the next step is for them, some some of those people from VTrans to go and do their own site inspection. And hopefully we'll hear back from them at some point. It may not be soon. I think, you know, just everything at the state level is moving a lot slower than normal, but eventually we should hear back from them. Um, excuse me, Joan. So the full report you sent to Chris Bump was about the site inspection in the village. Was that it? Um, yeah, it was a walkthrough that Frank right. Hooter and I did just to delineate where the trouble spots were. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Joan. Tony Goopy, you're here tonight? Yes. <laughs> well, the library is still, yeah. of course, doing porch pickup. And yeah, you can hear me. Yeah. The, uh, we're going to have uh, a trustee position open. Lynn Maltz is retiring, <laughs> resigning. And we didn't make the uh, cutoff, I guess. 
for the uh, ballot, but uh, Sandy Lincoln will run as a write-in. Okay, so she's going to run as a, a write-in. I guess we just make sure to make that um, known on our informational meetings. Yeah, I that would be nice. Yeah. Yes, thank yeah. you. Okay. All right, we've had, um, in terms of the highway, we had that last sloppy storm we had, had um, a couple um, couple trucks off the road, but no um, significant damage, luckily. So um, we're, I guess, ready for the next storm, supposed to come tomorrow night, right? Yeah. Did you guys yeah. see the picture of the UPS truck? Of I did see UPS that, UPS yeah. Carol? I asked um, the UPS driver the other day if that was him, and he smiled awesome. and shook his head, said it was the other guy. Yeah. Well, I talked to Diane uh, White today about something else, and she told me that she had cut the picture out of the of the paper because, uh, and um, that same UPS driver dropped off a package at her house today, and she showed him the picture and said, look, you made the paper, and he was all excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, that was a pretty, um, pretty slippery storm. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be colder for this next one. It shouldn't be so wet. Yeah. But we'll find out. Yeah. Um, don't have anything on utilities. The new business, um, I guess this is really the biggest topic now is um, how we're going to um, navigate the town, the non town meeting or the cyber town meeting. Um, so Frank, you want to talk about that? I, we're going to, we have scheduled two informational meetings. Yeah. Right. Um, we have dates for those. Uh, one will be our regular select board meeting, which is Monday, February 22nd. And the other one will be Thursday, February 25th, both starting at 6 PM. Thursday, okay. February 25th, and both at 6 PM and they're both zoom, right? I see. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and there is a there is a uh, agenda, an informational meeting procedure for the remote Zoom meeting that Nancy put together, which we can uh, post throughout the village and, and make it apparent on how to get into uh, the town meeting and and all of that. Also, um, the ballots have been completed and have been sent to Spalding Press. And it's a 32 article, uh, 31 articles and one question, or 30, uh, 33, I guess, with one question and the rest are articles. 33 articles and one question, you said? Okay, thank you. Yeah, 30, 30, 32 articles and one question. Of those 32 articles, 11 of them are for elected officials and two are to change the clerk and treasurer to three-year term and 18 are, uh, are 18 or 19 are articles devoted to budget and money issues. Nancy, you have something you want to say? Can I just comment on the informational meetings? Uh, we were advised by the town attorney that the informational meetings are strictly for financial discussions not for candidate discussion. So I think that these, these candidates for positions are going to have to be out there making sure that people are aware. Um, Sandy wasn't the only one that did not get her consent form in. And these other people are going to have to get out there to get their write-ins in. But Jim Barlow said that this is not a candidates forum. It is for discussion of the financial uh, business of the town. And when you see the um, agenda for the meetings, you'll see that the candidates are not listed as financial. But they, they could be discussed at like maybe the select board that follows after, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah they, they could. That would probably be that. Yeah. So, um, excuse me, am I correct that, that the regular select board meeting Monday, February 22nd, 
will start out with the info meeting and then become a regular select board meeting or vice versa? Yeah. Yeah, they'll start, start out. out with the uh, the informational meeting and okay. then the select board meeting will follow it. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah, and you're right, Julie. That um, that could be added to the agenda of the um, select board meeting to discuss them um, if candidates have statements they want to make. Or, yeah. And that's on the Monday night meeting. And yeah. will, will um, uh, invitations go out for that or? Is how are you going to handle that? Uh, it's in the town report. It'll be posted all over town. I'll send it as a notification as well. Thanks. It'll be on the web. It is on. It will be on the website. Yep. With a link. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I can send yep the link out with the notification. Okay. Thank you, Julie. You're welcome. Sure. Be interesting. Um, be a little anticlimactic, actually, to um, have the the informational meetings and then just do a ballot at home. I mean, we'll. Uh, but hopefully, this is the only year we'll have to do that. Yeah. Well, you don't have to do your ballot at home. You can go down to the school from ten to seven on Monday the first, which is the normal, okay. the normal uh, town meeting day. Okay, so I should probably mention that, that that's your option. You can go to the school or you can you can put your ballot in the drop box at the town office. Is that how you would do it? Or would you mail it? I can't remember what we were going to do with the ones that if you didn't go down to the school. Julie, do you want to deal with it? Uh, it's just like the election. So um, you can request a ballot and I can either mail it or you can pick it up. You can come in and vote. You can um, drop off your ballot. It, it's just like the election was done. Right, okay, thank you. Yeah. The only thing that's different are the hours, and the hours will be from 10 to 7. Right. So that they don't freeze down there. Yeah. And so that's Monday the 1st you're doing that, or Monday the or Tuesday the 2nd? Monday. It's Monday well, the 1st. The town meeting is the 1st. Okay, the that's what Monday. I thought. Always the first. first Monday. Yeah, okay. And what we should... Part of you should also note that there is a, a school board vote on Tuesday. Yeah, Ethan second. Bowen was supposed to be sending me some information about that. Hopefully he will. Thank you. All right. Um, Pat, you said earlier that you had something that you wanted to talk about? Yes. Um, on the subject of election procedures, the select board would like to practice transparency and provide a follow-up statement to concerns raised by Robert Franks in our September 28th, 2020 select board. Um, Robert has provided this statement to the select board and the town. I want to thank the town of Rochester, Vermont for taking heed to the law of our state, your town and our voting district to make certain that proper voting station laws were put forth in the proper US way. With confidence, I trust that all boards of civil authorities in our voting district take responsibility to ensure their oath is responsible, knowledgeable, enduring and abiding by the Vermont Constitution, our US Constitution and our freedoms of speech. Um, I just wanted to add a little comment at, uh, I'd like to thank the Rochester Board of Civil Authority for their multiple and continual efforts and meetings to keep our town government ahead of and compliant with the ever-changing laws related to the election process. It's almost been a moving target in these last this last year. And um, thank you so much for those of you that are out there on the Board of Civil Authority and for our point person, um, Frank, for uh, guiding the way through this so that we, uh, we stay compliant and the people, our constituents are happy. Um, excuse me, Patty, I, I, I couldn't get that all down. When it, is there any way you could email me a little something about that just so that I, or 
don't interrupt. I, yep. Um, I'm news at our herald.com. You have my email. Right here. Thank you very much, Patty. I'm sorry. I want to make sure I get it in correctly. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Pat. Um, it's pretty, um, pretty slim agenda tonight. Is there anything else that anyone would like to talk about before we um, hit has, the, the has, a, has John come in for uh, to sign his contract yet, Julie? Uh, he's coming in tomorrow. Coming in tomorrow, yeah. He is. Um, we need to make sure that he's going to shovel out the hydrants. There's a lot of them I noticed. That I are just, buried. Um, he, he just came and got the map of those this afternoon. Good, good. From me. So he's, he's off. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, in fact, I think they've started shoveling some of them out. But yeah. It, yeah. Terry had spoke to me about it, and I wanted yeah. to make sure we yeah especially with another done, storm you know. coming yep. yep thank you all right and i i have a comment yep so this just some of you already know this but uh, this week i think we're going to begin a fundraising uh project to raise money to build uh replacement structures at the school for the tents that that couldn't hold the snow um so we're going to start doing that this week uh, a, a donor in town has already given money for two of them, one for each school. So we're looking for money to raise another one here in Rochester and another one in, in uh, Stockbridge. So Stockbridge will raise their own money and we're going to raise one with the PTO. Uh, how, for, much, how much it cost to one of us? I think it's about five grand. All right. Um, that, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Then they'll be assembled by... Uh, volunteers with help with Greg and his people. This is Greg uh, Ryan's structures made here in Rochester. I don't know how familiar you are with that, but uh, we're going to put up some videos and, and stuff uh, on the fundraising site. So that I'm just kind of alerting people that it's coming. Um, Rob? Yeah? At some point, maybe I could, if you want, um, I, it took me to call more attention to this. I could write a little separate article about this if you want to yeah, talk. That'd about be it. great. In fact, I was going to contact you about that and give you all the stuff. We're just okay. finalizing the stuff this week. If, but... you, if you would like to do that, I'm, I'm working at home, so you can call my home. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'll okay. send you. I'll send you some printed stuff or some text. Sure. All right. Uh, Thank you, you very know. much. And as soon as the website is up, that'll have the pictures and videos and stuff on it. And all I right. hope Thank it happens you. this week. So thanks a lot for that. Mm -hmm. No right. problem. Are, are they temp more temporary kind of thing structures or, or are they permanent? You know, they're interesting because they, they can be temporary. You can put them up in a day. You can take them down in a day. They don't have a foundation, but if you put them up, they'll probably last for 50 years. They're made of timber and, and uh, fiberglass. Yeah. They're really very interesting structures. And he's been working with uh, Cricket uh, to make sure it clears state code for snow load and everything. So there, it's a, one, it's a wonderful project. I'll, and everybody will get an email with a link to the fundraising site. Um, so, and this is about shelters for the COVID, get kids outdoors, but, all, but they'll continue to be in use after uh, and when COVID goes away, hopefully COVID is going away. So. Yeah, yeah. When are they planning on putting that up, you know? You know, I think Greg's gonna be ready to put the first two up in a couple of weeks, say two or three weeks. Um, and then we'll be raising money both in Stockbridge and, and Rochester for the other two. Um, and of course, however long it takes to raise the money, we'll determine how long those will go up. But he, he hopes to get a couple of them up within two or three weeks. He's building them now up, up at his shop yeah. in West Hill. All right. No, good. All right. Um, anything else, anyone? If not, thank you all for um, stepping out on this chilly evening, and um, I'll see you uh, see you around town behind your mask. Yeah. Good night. Good night, night, all. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night.